Welcome to Foundations of Figma, our most in-depth Figma course for beginners. Today we will learn the basics of components and variants along with many other practical applications that are used in the UX design industry. My name is Ansh Mehra and I educate businesses about design and AI. This is lecture 4 of our 10 lecture series. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Alright, so let's get started. We are at lecture number four. Before this, we had covered the basics of Figma and we understood what Figma is really for in lecture one. In lecture two, we went really deep into understanding the difference between a frame and a group and applications of auto layout. In lecture three, we covered styles and libraries, which is very, very important to declare the foundations of your design system. Now, I totally, totally recommend every single person to watch each of these lectures at least twice and document all of their learnings. If you haven't seen these three lectures you can always watch them once you finish lecture number four but please make sure that you're finishing these lectures on time we upload one lecture a week so don't lose your momentum this is a part of a 10 lecture series and a lot of more in-depth videos on figma and ux design are available on our free learning platform learnuiux.in where we regularly publish our free videos our premium courses workshops meetups mentorships and a lot more this lecture series is not a UX design course. This lecture series is on learning Figma. Figma is very different from UX design. Figma is the tool, whereas UX design is the subject. So please make sure that when you're watching these videos, you should not feel like you're learning UX. I just want to make sure that you understand what Figma can do for you and how do you do things in Figma so that when you start learning UX, you can implement your vision. So today's syllabus is split into three modules. In module number one, we'll understand what exactly are components and component properties. In module two, I'll show you what are instances and how instances are declared for asset libraries. Basically, a group of components, a group of buttons and small, small things that you can export and use from one one file to another and in module 3 we will cover variants and variant properties now throughout this session if i want to focus on something i will zoom in my cursor otherwise you can always see my key letters pressed on the top right corner so with that let's start with module number one what exactly are figma components now folks it is very very easy to understand that when you're making an app you reuse a lot of things Right? If you're making a button component, you don't use that button in just one single place. Right? For example, assume that I'm making an application where I am selling my courses. Right? And then there is a screen where I am listing all of my lessons. Now this thing right here, the thumbnail preview, the title, this eye icon, the view count, all of these things are a part of a group. And now I am using this entire group again and again. So instead of group, I will use the word component. Why? Because this thing right here, let's say I take this out, I can use this in this screen and in many other screens as well. So usually I would sort of duplicate this and just change this image and change the text and reuse again and again. Now this is what components are for. Components help you to create one single component that you can reuse again and again. But the biggest advantage of a component is that, for example, let's make something very, very simple. Let's just say this is a blue dot. And I'm using this blue dot across the app. Now, if I'm using this blue dot in four different places, obviously they are different objects with their own different identity. Let's assume that someday I decide that now instead of this blue dot, this has to become an orange dot. So after making the decision, I now need to make sure that all of these blue dots are orange dots, which means that I individually have to change them, which means I will have to waste a lot of time. But what if there was a way where I could make one change here and it would get reflected to all of these? You can do that using components. So let's just say that right now, I'll make a copy of this and let's call this as a yellow dot, okay? And let's put all of these together. Let's tidy them up and let's just have three of them so that it's easy for me as well. Let's keep a yellow dot here. Now this time, I will go to the stop icon right here, which looks like a diamond. And if I hover on top of it, it says create component. I will click on that. As soon as I do that, two things happen. Number one, I see a blue boundary around this and a name which says ellipse 19. So basically, if I don't rename this layer, Figma will automatically give it a default name. 
And because throughout the file, this was the 19th ellipse I have made, it automatically renamed this as 19. So, you know, this was 15, this was 16, this was 18, 17 I deleted, right? You just saw that. Now, the fun part is that if I hold the option or the alt key and make a copy of this, you'd realize that even in the layers panel, I have one diamond shape thing, which is called ellipse 19. And then I have a hollow diamond which says ellipse 20 and ellipse 21. The fun part is that if I take these three circles and if I select this one, which are like normal layers, if I convert this blue into red, I still have to individually go because all of these three are distinct individual layers. Okay. These are detached layers. They don't know what is happening with the other layers. But in this case, if I select this yellow dot right here, and then if I make a selection and change this to red, the color change is reflected on every single instance. Now this hollow diamond, it basically means that these two ellipses are instances of this component. So it is very, very similar to a parent and child connection. Whatever changes you make into the component are inherited to the children. Now, the important thing here is that of course it saves you time, but a huge benefit is that it helps you build consistency across the user interface of your app. Because imagine if you're making a button again and again, first of all, you will spend a lot of time to make sure that all of the buttons look the same. And secondly, if there are more team players, if there are more designers on your team, then they will also end up making a lot of gaps because there's no system to follow. Now, as I said, there are two aspects to a component, okay? One is your main component and then you have your instances. Now I can always select any of the instances and do command option B. In that way, you'll realize that the hollow diamond gets out and we see a frame and then an ellipse inside the frame. Now, when I make a change, let's just say I shrink the height, none of those changes will be reflected to the detached instance because now it is no longer a child of that parent. Now you can also do the same by going to right click and then clicking on detach instance. In fact, let's just say that I go and this instance is way far away from its component. On the very right side, you can see the instance name. You can also click on this diamond icon and go to the main component as well. So what is the purpose of this? Maybe you're using this red dot in some random file and you realize that no, I want this red dot to change. Now, if I make any change on the instance, it is not reflected onto the component. That means that if I make a change to the child, it doesn't mean that the parent will change. But if I make a change to the parent, then the child will change. So let's just say I am using all of these instances and I realize that now I need to make a change to the component. Instead of finding it everywhere on the canvas, you can simply go to this section right here, click on this diamond icon and it will take you to the component. When you do this switch, Figma also allows you to quickly return to the instance as well. So maybe I was working on the instance. I realized I need to make a change into the component. I make the change into the component. Then maybe I want to go back to where I was two minutes ago. So I can click on return to instance and I will get back to that point. If I click on this kebab menu, you again have detach all instances. And then you also have reset all changes. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say I go and I realize that this is an ellipse. I come to this part and I realize that maybe I don't want this to be red. Okay. Maybe I want this to also have a stroke, which is like a yellow stroke, right? And then I probably keep it to five and maybe this red button is slightly darker. So now the fun part is that in an instance, there are some limited things that you can change and we'll understand that one by one. And I'll tell you what you can change and what you cannot change. But let's just say you've applied some changes to the instance. You can't make physical changes, but you can change the fill. You can add a stroke. You can add cosmetic changes, right? So I can't really say that I'm going to morph this ellipse into a square. I can't do that. But when it comes to cosmetic changes, visual changes, you can do that. And these are called overrides. So you can call them changes as well, but the correct word is going to be override. Now, why is it called override? Because I had a default set of properties. And I did something which is overriding on top of the default setting. So I'm essentially replacing the default properties. Now I can always go to the kebab menu and then click on reset all changes and it'll come back to the normal. Now, 
let's just say that i make changes to this instance and i realize that this instance has become so much better than my component i can again go to the kebab menu click on push changes to the main component and as soon as i do that all of these changes will now be pushed to my main component now you would be wondering that anch these are such basic features how is this even helpful but trust me when i say this these features are supremely supremely helpful also this entire figma file along with all of our previous figma files are freely available on the figma community the links to download all of these files are always in the description we always pin them in the comment section as well so you can always duplicate these files and try these out so let's quickly understand how do you create a component let's just say that i come up with this object right here i've already made this into a component so what i'll do is i'll still have another copy of this okay let me detach it and let me just delete the original component okay now we have this file right here let's just say that i've made everything into a frame and you have to make sure that any time that you're making your component you have your constraints set please folks this is a very very important property if you don't know what are constraints check out lecture number 2 but once you have finalized your constraints and visual design the number one way is of course you go here you click on this diamond icon and you would notice that this would instantly become into a component the other shortcut key would be option command k now a lot of people ask me that anch these are all mac shortcuts how do we convert them into windows shortcuts the principle is very very simple any time i say option you need to replace that with alt any time i say command you need to replace it with control so for windows it should be alt control k now at any point if you feel that we're not able to figure out our shortcuts you can always click on this question mark right here and you'll have a lot of youtube videos and keyboard shortcuts and a lot of these things right so you can literally click on keyboard shortcuts and they have all of these shortcut keys listed here and the fun part is that you see that some are filled and some are not so this basically means that i haven't used this shortcut yet so as you use all of these shortcuts they will become filled so that's a quick way to you know track your learnings and to see if you've explored all of them or not now once i have created the component if i have to make an instance of it i have to press the option key and then drag my component out so then you will have the instance now if you do command option b you will obviously detach it so now it has become a normal frame now a very very important thing to understand here is that let's say i make an instance and i delete the component you might delete the actual component declaration but because one instance already exists the component is somewhere in the memory of figma so you can always go on the right side and click on restore component and the component will come back again so it just helps you to make sure that you know by chance if you ever delete the component even if you have any one of the instances you can still restore the component now what you can also do is let's just say that i have two things to make a component okay i will take all of these and let's just say i go here and let's add a different fill let's make this into a lighter gray and i'll delete this one i'll make a copy of this and let's make this red and let's just say that i want to make both of them component okay different components what people usually do is they would select all of these together and click on this component sign when you do that then all of these files are now stuck together and this has become my component so there's one single component and within the component i have two of these frames attached together but this is not what i wanted right i wanted both of them to be different components so let me get rid of this let me delete this let me detach these press return so when i press return i enter one level down in the hierarchy and i can just take them out and put them right here so oops what did happen oh check this out there's a reason why i can't see any of these frames and this is a very very important thing to learn i selected component 2 and i had all of my frames inside component 2 theek hai i took them out and somehow they entered slide 5 see inside slide 5 i have this quick byte and quick byte now if i select slide 5 you'd realize that it has clip content on if i unselect it you realize that i can see everything out but i want to keep clip content so let me just delete this component to frame i'll take these quick bytes and get them outside the frame okay very very important i used to make this mistake again and again and keep wondering where did my component go usually it's because it's hidden in some frame that has clip content now i will select both of these frames 
go to the small icon right here which is called a chevron and select create multiple components not create component because if i do create component then again they'll be stitched and they'll become a one single component what is component set we'll understand later but i'll select create multiple components now you'll realize that i have this as a separate component this as a separate component but the names are same so that is really really bad uh, and we'll understand what is the right way to do this but if you are creating multiple components if you feel that they don't belong to the same family then you should have different names but in this case you can obviously see that they do belong to the same family it's just that the colors are different so you can always have the same name and when once you have the same names you can select all of them and then click on combine as variants now what are variants we'll cover this later but let's just cover the basics first right so you understood how to select multiple things and create a component together now as i said when you create a component right let's just say i take all of this entire thing and create a component again if you delete the component the instance still remains so let's just say i delete this component it doesn't mean that the instance has gone the instance still exists so you can always go here and restore it by clicking on this option another very important thing to know is that if i detach this and make this into a component i cannot detach a latest component declaration so i told you the shortcut right option command b if i run that again and again on the component declaration nothing will happen why because option command b is to only detach an instance it is not to undeclare a component so undeclaring a component is very very different from detaching an instance so it's a very small subtle thing to understand but i just thought i'll let you know now once you have declared a component let's just say that this is a button right and in my button the issue is that so let me just detach all of these things and let's start from scratch okay let's just say this is my button component now in a button system you know there are some places where you only need an icon on the right side okay there are some places where you don't even need an icon now if i make a component for all of these button types i will go crazy right so i'll have to put a different name for every single button and you will have like thousands of buttons because you have different icons then you have primary secondary tertiary then you have hover disable blah 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 so to simplify your design systems what we have is component properties now i'll show you how this works so let's assume that i want three types of buttons okay in category 1 i want the icon on the left side in category 2 i want the icon on the right side here i don't want any icon at all but i don't want the overhead of maintaining three different components what i can do is i can think and realize that dude if you really think about it if i put the icon on the right side this main component can actually be converted into different types because i can literally take a copy of this and hide this part here right in this one i can hide this here right in some cases i can hide both of them so basically all of these are some variations of this one single mega component or so called god component so if i click on this icon again here is where things become very interesting so let's understand the structure of this button right here okay i'm going to take a screenshot and i'm going to keep this here you have play circle which is the left one you have your label text and then you have the right icon okay this is where we understand component properties i'll go here and select this one okay as soon as i select this one first of all i can see the parent component which says basic button no icon it's basically saying that the this is an instance inside a parent component okay now here you have the instance properties now first of all when i click on this drop down arrow figma allows me to swap this icon with any other instance if this wasn't an instance if bx play circle was just a frame swapping would not work so swapping only works when i have used an instance inside a component declaration so you can see that i can switch between different icons and how did i get this icons this is because i have enabled the box icon library you can also do it you just have to go and watch lecture 3 this is where we discussed all of these things now let's say that i have selected an icon and i want to add a specific swapping property now i'll explain you what that means absolutely it's going to be super super simple to understand so let's assume that i have created this component and i want an option where i should be able to just swap this icon this one right here from the right side what i will do is i will go to this icon in my component declaration select it 
and click on this button right here which says create instance swap property. As soon as I do that, it asks me to give a name. So I can write this as left icon. And here it is asking me a value. Now this is very, very similar to how we did it in styles, right? You remember we had key and value. So here in value, I can see that the default value can be something like power off, right? And the fun part is that if I go here in my preferred values, I can say that there are some buttons, some icons that I regularly use. So I can say that maybe I want BX adjust and I want BX alarm snooze. Now these three are the ones that I use regularly. So I sort of prefer them. Once I click on create property, you will realize that in my component declaration, instead of that swapping icon that I had before, instead of that Chevron, I have this thing called left icon. I can detach this as well. But if I go to the instance, this is what you see when I'm looking at the component. If I go back to the instance, you'd realize that now just below the instance, I have a new property that says left icon. And I can go here and then choose between either my preferred values or go and select my icon pack, which is remix icons, and then select any of these icons. So it helps me swap between different icons very, very fast. Another thing that I can do is that I can again select this. And instead of swapping, I can also toggle the visibility which means that if I want a variation where I don't want the left icon at all, I can go to the layers panel where we toggle our visibility and click on this icon right here. And this is called creating a Boolean property. As soon as I do that, I can name this property as visible and by default, let the value be true. I will create the property. Now, when I go here, you'd realize that I have visible right here. And if I toggle this, I can now make the icon come and go away. So because the visible is off, you won't even see the option to swap, right? But it's super, super cool. Now, of course, there are so many variations where maybe I don't want the icon here, or maybe I can select the right icon as well, go here and probably just have a visibility toggle. And I'll call this as right visible. Terrible spelling, but yeah, you get the point. And here I can remove the right one. Here I can remove both the right one and the left one. But maybe this is for switch on, right? This can be for play. This can be for login. I have different text, right? So if I want to change the text, I have to go and select this and, you know, double click and do all of these things. You can do this in a much more simpler way. If you select the text clear and go into the text panel and you see this button label right here, you can click on this and actually create a text property as well. So I can have this called button text, create the property. And now you have a property called button text where you can just switch between your words very, very easily. So all of your variations can be toggled from one single place without getting deep. Right now, this is very, very useful when you're creating a system. And of course, when you watch our UX design videos, you'd realize why do we even need this? So as I keep saying again and again, that this is a Figma course, not a UX design course. So once you understand how this works in Figma, obviously you will be able to understand these things, right? So there are very limited things that you can change in an instance. For example, if the component has only three layers, you can't add a fourth layer in the instance, but you can play around with the existing three layers that you already have. So you can toggle the visibility, you can swap any instance, you can change the text, you can change the color, all of those things, you know, you can sort of figure it out. So of course, I showed you Boolean properties, I showed you the instance swap, I showed you text properties, we'll cover variant properties as well, which is a part of our second module or third module. So when we get to that, I'll show you how do we do variant properties as well. Now, just to quickly revise all of the things that we studied, we understood that in a Boolean property, all you can do is toggle it for visibility. And it can only have two options. It is either true or false. So basically, if I have this text right here, if I were to detach this and create this into a new component, I can select the text, go to the layers and then have a Boolean property that maybe says text visibility. And it'll either be true or false by default. Once I create the property, I can take this component, duplicate it and then just toggle the text. 
So the Boolean property is just to make things either visible or hidden. Now, folks, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please make sure you comment below your feedback. Click on subscribe and hit the bell icon because we see a lot of people come to these videos but don't really subscribe or hit the bell icon and they miss out on these consistent videos and tutorials. So just a quick reminder because when you like this video, when you comment, YouTube gets to know that this content is working. Now. Another revision, instance swap property. So I said that if you have a button, God level button like this, you can always create a component, select any of these icons on the inside and then create these instance swap properties where you can either add preferred values or you can actually go select anything which is declared as an instance inside any of your other libraries. I usually prefer uh, to have those preferred values, right? That's very funny to say. But yes, uh, it just saves a lot of time because you don't have to scroll through the entire thing. But one very, very important thing to note is that if these were not instances, let's just say that I detach all of them and then create a component. So you'll realize that these are all frames, right? So I can't do the instance swapping thing at all. It is just a parent component thing and I can't do any of those component properties, right? So you have to make sure uh, that you do these things properly because if I select any of this, swapping is not there. I can still have the Boolean property of making it visible or invisible. But yes, it is always better to have instances inside all of your components. I personally feel that 80 to 90% of your declarations should have instances. Like if you have a lot of white text here, then there's something wrong. So you have to make sure that most of your content here is in blue. So if it's in blue, it means that you have good systems happening. Right. Uh, and one very important thing here is that once you have declared a component, right, you can also select shift I and then search all of your components right here. But you can only search through things that have been declared. Right. So, for example, if this frame 544 is not declared, I won't be able to search this anywhere. Right. So you can only search uh, through the entire instance library. You cannot find normal layers. OK, text property, I already covered that when you want to use multiple copies for this single button label, then you always go here and select a text property. So if I were to detach this again, create a component, take this thing right here, I can create my property uh, from one single place. Right. So this is where you can create your text property. Now, this does not support rich text, which basically means that if you had a list or a superscript, which basically means that if I go here and select any of these options, then it won't work in the text property right now. It is only helping you uh, declare content, which is like normal text. Now, variant properties is again way more useful than component properties. We'll cover this later. Uh, so before we do that, just a quick understanding of how do you maintain your instances, right? So with that, we start module number two as to what exactly are instances and how do we maintain them? The most important principle is of understanding nested properties. So let's take an example right here. OK, let's assume that one component is of the button and one component is of the listing. OK, I can create an instance of both of them. Correct. Then put them together, put them in an auto layout and then create a component of this as well. So when that happens, if I create an instance of this group component, First, this is my instance and then within the instance, you have more instances. So this is called nested instances, right? Now, when you have nested instances, there are nested properties as well. So here there was only one component and you just had one level of property. In this case, let's assume that I have a headline property. Okay. When I go here, I have maybe a button property. So this instance has its own level of properties. This has its own properties. Now, when I make both of these together into a group and make a component, if I'm hanging out here, if I'm using this instance, I want to change these properties, right? I want to change this button text. I want to change all of this content here. So if I want to edit my component properties right from this instance, what I need to do is I need to go to this group component, then click on the properties panel and select expose properties from nested instances. Then it will say, what all properties do you want to expose? And maybe I say, I want from basic buttons. I want from listing as well, right? So now when I select this instance, I will also see the component properties that were declared in this level. So I select here and now you can have all of this content edited right here. So you can see that this is not left aligned. It's probably because this is centrally aligned. So now it is fixed, right? So you can have nested instances and then nested values that you can edit from the outermost variant as well. Now, when it comes to preferred values, I think I've already discussed this. You can always, you know, tell Figma that these are the specific values that I want to have. There's one more thing 
that you know any time you're using an instance there are so many layers that you just don't want to see right because when you're editing you just want to see stuff in an instance that you have the power to edit right because here maybe i don't want you to edit this icon maybe i don't want you to edit the spacing or any other layer but i want you to edit lesson includes so for that you can literally select a component go here and then you can select this option called simplify all instances what it does is that it hides any layer which is without an editable property right so you don't go through all of the nonsense you only see what you can edit and this is very very helpful when you have really really complicated components now when you declare all of these components where do you even find the list of these assets how do i see what all i have declared so you can always go to this icon right here which is the assets panel and you'll have all of the components that you've declared in this file as well as all the other libraries that you have imported right so if i go here and then go to say all libraries i'll see all of the libraries that i've imported as well but if i click on local components then i will only see stuff which is available here now quick shortcut folks if i do option 1 i will switch to layers panel if i do option 2 it's the assets panel in fact option 3 opens up the libraries panel which is in the center option 8 is for design option 9 is for prototype so you can switch between these very very seamlessly also you need to understand that if you have declared these components inside a file you might have declared them inside a page you can declare them inside a frame as well so figma remembers all of these things so it knows that you know within lecture 2 uh, these are the components but within lecture 2 you might have put them in a specific frame as well right so it keeps a track of that as well that within lecture 2 you had this page and then you had this bar so all of these things are you know very very carefully tracked if you want to keep all of those things uh, you know organized and well maintained now when it comes to naming your components i always use the slash convention which basically means that i can have button slash hover button slash primary all of those things but if you put an underscore before the component name then what figma does is they would only use the component inside this file even if you declare a library of this file you will not be able to access that local component anywhere else so it's just to make sure that if there's any component that you don't want to be edited or used outside this file but you still need an instance of it you can put the underscore now where do we apply this what is the application of it we will cover all of these things in detail when we enter our ux design videos right because i don't want to intimidate you folks with a lot of this content so today we just want to understand where do you click to achieve this specific feature inside figma once i've taught you figma we'll have in depth videos as to what is the application of all of these small small things right now we you have local components which are declared inside the file and then you also have enabled libraries so when i do option 3 these are all the different libraries that i can import and then if i click on publish then all of the components that i declared in this specific file can be enabled in other libraries so i think this stuff is pretty straightforward in fact folks i would totally recommend you to go to figma community and search for ui2 which is figma's design system so you can actually go publish that library import it here and then if i do shift i uh, i can go to recents and then i can select ui2 and then i'll have all the cards and all of the components that figma uses in their tool yes it is super super meta you can actually have all of these components and learn from this and that is what we will be doing right so shift i is for quick insert and of course you have right side panel as well but i just personally really really like yeah using this shortcut now the interesting part is that when you import this figma file you will realize how crazy and how well maintained and how well organized uh, was this entire structure right so you'll see all of the components that you see right here you'll see the figma files of it so it's going to be super super exciting for you as well right now we spoke about overrides right we briefly understood what an overrides and it basically means all the changes that you make to a single instance now the important thing to understand here is that let's just say i take a button let's go here let's take this button right here right now if i were to select this icon okay and change the color let's just say i make this blue or let's just make this red okay and let me make this as black if i make a copy of this instance and this is also an instance by the way i did an override right i changed the color it was an override if i go here and swap the icon to something else the red color still remains but something very weird happened only some part of the icon became red and everything else became black now why did this happen let's try something new 
I will make a copy again, select this icon, and this time instead of the podcast icon, maybe I'll choose a simple play button. This time things worked out. Now, why did this happen? Because if you want your overrides to stay even after swapping, the layer structure needs to be absolutely identical. Which means that if in my BX play circle I only have two vectors, one this and one this, my podcast also needs to have only two vectors. So it only applied red to the first two vectors and forgot all of these. So when you're swapping, it is very, very important that the layer structure needs to be identical. Otherwise, it will not work out. And as I said, whatever overrides you make in an instance are not reflected onto the component until unless you go and specifically say push these changes to the master component. So we'll get into the details of why this is useful and how does this work. But for now, let's just quickly understand what all Figma can do for you. All right, folks, I'm recording this on a new day because I had to go somewhere on day one and these videos take a lot of time. Let's get back into the session. We were discussing what exactly is allowed in an override. So let's just say that I have this component right here. Okay, and this is a component that basically gives a, a book recommendation. Now, if I duplicate it and let's just bring this outside, if this is my real component, and let's just say I've added some level of constraints to it, I can stretch my instance just like this, whether it's on the vertical axis or on the horizontal axis. And if I were to go inside this fill, you'd realize that this has an auto layout. Now, because this has an auto layout, it is not stretching itself. So what I can do is I can go back to my component right here. And if I were to delete this frame, then this thing becomes stretchable. So you can obviously see, uh, let me stretch the vertical height for this one and we'll do the width for this one. So let's see how both of them react. Okay. And let me bring all of these outside. And if you don't know how constraints work, please make sure you watch lecture number two. It is supremely important that you do that. So if I were to go into the layer structure, you have your frame five and within that you have one more auto layout. This I will not stretch. You have your mini book, which is right here and you have the frame color. So the frame itself has a fill along with a stroke. Now, what I want is that this mini book should actually probably stay uh, on the top left corner. So it's probably going to be in this way. Let's go back to the component. I thought I had copied the component, but I just made an instance. So let's bring this right here. The important thing to note that uh, components will have their names visible up on top, whereas on instances you will not see it. Right. So let me take this out and I'll put this on left and on top and then this auto layout can also be on left and on top. Now there are multiple ways that you can do this, right? You can also say that it might stay on left, but in alignment ways, it can stay in the center. So that also works, right? So physical changes can work in an instance as long as you've added constraints. But if you say, can I create another subtext? Even if I press duplicate, nothing will happen. So I created the duplicate and it jumped outside the instance but you literally cannot add something. But can I delete something for sure? If I press delete, is it getting deleted from the instance? Not at all, it is getting hidden. So you still have all of the objects available. It's just that they can be hidden, right? Another thing is that I can change any of the text properties. So I can switch between different fonts and it would still work out. But if I were to do something, uh, say add another headline to it, I can't do that. So here you have different font sizes and all of these things but you'd realize that they're not able to shift, right? If you say that, yes, Anj, what if we probably extend the lines and do any of these principles, then yeah, that would work because now that I have selected this entire boundary auto height thing, because of auto layout, it is working. But if this was not an auto layout, let's just say that if I were to delete this auto layout, then it wouldn't work, right? Because now it is not adapting. So you can always change your text properties. Then you can also change the fill and stroke. So let's just say instead of Nero, if I want to make it probably, you know, blue or something else, then that would also work. And I can also add and change the stroke as well. Then you have swap in instances only. So as I said, if I go to this thing right here, this recommended read is actually not an instance. It's an auto layout. So you'd realize that I can't swap this right? But if I were to go to this mini book symbol right here, then I have a small little arrow that allows me to switch this to any other instance as well, 
right? So swapping is only available in instances. There's one more thing that they've added that let's just say I go here in recommended read and I realize that this is not an instance. If you hover on top of this, they have one more option right here that says select the instance this layer is a part of. As soon as I do that, it would come one level above and it would select the instance that you know, hosts this entire thing, right? Now, if you copy this instance, the overrides will stay, which basically means that if I copy this, I have a copy that has all the overrides with it, which is pretty straightforward. Push overrides, we understood. Reset overrides, we also understood. Another thing is that sometimes your layer structure is very, very complicated and you don't want to go through this entire nest, right? So if you hold the command key and then right click, you'll go and see every file right here. So the fun part here is that let's just say, I have locked this layer, okay? I have locked this layer. And now after locking the layer, I'm trying to edit. So even if I double click, nothing will happen. But if I hold the command key and right click, then I can go through and select everything, even if the layer is locked. So it's just a quick shortcut key that I wanted to share. Another very, very important thing to know is that let's say I have declared a local component inside this Figma file and I published a library. Then I created file number two. And inside that file number two, I am using this library. If you have made any changes in your original declaration, then all the other files that are trying to use your instance need to know. Now, how will they know? If I am creating this component right here, let's just say this is my Figma course library. I will go to another Figma file, which is called daily UX learning. Step number one would be, of course, I take this entire file. Let's just say I hold the option key. I create an instance. I cut it. I come here and I paste it. As soon as I do that, you'd realize that you will see that this is an instance. Now, if I do option three, I can actually see all the libraries that have been included in daily UX learning. So if I were to search Figma course, I will first have to see if this file has been added to this or not. Now you'd realize that even though I pasted, it came as an instance, this library is still not added, which basically means that if I go here and let's just say, I change this into the color purple, right? Now, if I go here, that change is not reflected. This has not become purple. Technically it is an instance, right? But I have created a change right here and these were overrides, so they didn't care. But technically if I'm making a change in the component, it should have been visible here. Now, why did this not happen? Because I didn't use my instances correctly. First of all, when you make a change into a component, you need to go press option three or you go here and click on this book icon and you first need to publish. So once you have published the library and enabled it in the second file, only then they will be synced. Now, once I have published, I will go back to my daily UX learning. Okay. And you'd realize that I have this one small pop-up right here that says component updates available. I will go on review. And it'll tell me that there's one file that has been updated. So I can either click on update all, which means that if I had a lot of instances getting changed, I can select update all and all of them will be updated. Or if I just want one of them to get updated, then I will select that secondary button. So now I've seen the changes again. But again, if I go to option three, you would realize if I search for Figma course again, it is still not added to the file. Now what's happening is that even though this instance is linked, if I were to search for any other component, which was declared right here in this file, I will not be able to search it through here because the library is not enabled. The instance has been passed forward. One instance is connected, but I don't have access to the entire library. To do that, I need to make sure that I go here inside Figma course and then select add to file. Once I do that, you realize that the assets panel is now loading. And now I have all of the files. If I were to select Figma course, I will have all of these components individually declared right here. So this is very, very important uh, when you're sort of throwing all of these components from one side to another. So let me just bring this here and put this back. So yes, that was the basics of components and instances. And now we come to the concept of variants as to what exactly are variants. Now folks, what happens is that when you're creating components, you realize that so many of the components are literally in the same category. This is a set of buttons from Figma's design system. Okay. And you can notice that we have one primary button. We have one secondary button. Then we have the secondary button with an icon. And then we have a state of the secondary button as well. So what happens is that if I were to take these out, all of these are instances. Okay. If I were to take these out and put them in a frame, 
and let's just detach all of them okay if i were to select all of these go here and create multiple components i will have to put button slash this button slash that and then search through those names the fun part is that i can select all of them and then because i know they belong to the same button family i can select combine as variants as soon as i do that you will see this blue boundary around it this basically means that you have created the variants and on the very right side you'll see this thing called as properties and by default it says property number 1 default now let me explain this one by one look at these buttons right here if i were to put these into groups how would they really look like so you have your primary button okay you have your secondary button then within secondary button you have a variation which has an icon right and then within that you have a different state so maybe this is one way to establish the hierarchy another way can be that i can take all of these two and put them in a separate category all together right now maybe i can extend this to a level if you know things were equal that maybe you have one set of buttons which are just under primary okay i will take this one copy this icon right here and paste it here on the left so i'll take this inside my button frame i will put it on the left side and let's just make this white just to have uniformity we'll keep this at 100% and maybe this is one variation and then this is a state of this specific button right this can also be one way so when i say this is a way basically there's one property that says this is primary and then this group right here is secondary okay and let's just extend this more i'm holding the command key while extending my frame so that i bypass constraints and this can be no icon okay this can be left icon and similarly i can have right icon as well now within this also i have a state so there's probably like a three dimensional grid that's happening right now you can obviously imagine that organizing this will eventually become very cluttered so what happens is that you can actually make this very very simple you can create all of these declarations or all of these groupings using properties so if i were to organize this exact file this is how i would use properties inside variants i will first go and make one property which can be type now this is my property and properties have values so i will go here and select first of all these two and inside my type it says mixed right now i will double click and make this primary and then i will select these and i will make this as secondary okay but now this is still not enough because if i take this button i know the type but then within the type also there are so many variations so i will add one more i will click on plus and here you can either add a variant what is a boolean what is an instance swap what is a text these are just component properties so you remember i told you that you can actually create a component property for this text if i click on text right here and if i say this is called button text i can literally add a value saying hello and it'll just have the word button text but you'd realize that there's literally nothing that has changed in my component now why did that happen because i selected the boundary i selected the entire component then added a button property the correct way to do this would be i select this thing right here and then go here and select text create my property and then once i select this thing right here you have the button text now the fun part is that i can go here and let's say right click go to property and i can call this hello this basically means that only this has the text property all of them don't have any text properties so i can select this one also go here and if i select text it will also become hello now let's understand what exactly are variant properties so i told you that you know you can literally select the outer boundary and you can click on plus and this is the text property and then this text property can have as many text as you can so if i were to say sign up if i were to change this to sign up 
Now I'm making that change reflected across all the components inside the variant. And similarly, just like that, you can have instant swap and Boolean as well. So it's just that earlier we were doing this for one single component. Now it is in a family. So if I do it for one end, it'll apply to every single component inside the variant boundary. If I click on variant right here, I can actually create a new property. Now, when I click on variant inside property, people feel that I will create a new button. People feel that why are we not creating a new variant? When I am clicking the plus next to property, it means that I am creating a new variant property. I am creating a new Boolean property. So if I had to create a new variant, I will go to this plus sign. That is me creating a new variant. But it's just that when you go here and when you click on plus next to property, then it basically means you are creating a variant property. Now, what do I mean by that? As soon as I clicked on variant property, you'd realize that there is this new thing right here. I will call this property as left icon. Okay. And what I can do is I can select these two and go here in my left icon and call this as true because here the icon is either there or not there. So there is no primary, secondary, tertiary. It is either there or not there. So these are called Boolean values, right? I will select these two and in my left icon, I will say false. Now you can also do yes or no as well. So true, false, yes, no, they work. But then you'd be like, Anj, what is this category? Because this is secondary. The left icon is also there. So by default, this has to be true. Okay. So here you'd realize that left icon has true and false. This is there. But what about this one? This doesn't work anywhere, which means I have to create one more level of property. So I will go and I can't create a property from this thing. So I have to make sure that I select, select the boundary. I'll click on plus again, again, click on a variant property and maybe make it state. Okay. I will select this and I will probably go here and I will make this as disabled. Now let's see what happens. I will take this button out. You'd realize that I can switch between primary and secondary very, very easily. I can enable and disable the icon. I can go here, but if I select disabled, it will automatically switch to secondary. Now, why did that happen? Because there is no disabled in primary. To make this properly, to make this absolutely equal, I can duplicate this, go to my fill and probably make this say at 60%. And once I do that in my state, I can call this as disabled. So if I were to make a frame around this and instead of secondary, if I were to make it primary, then see, I've got the same thing. So it's very, very important to make sure that you have all of these properties declared for every single variant that you have. For example, if you have an input field, so input field has default, focused, error state. So instead of creating different, different components, you have different, different properties. Your property can be for size, state or colors. And of course we have created in-depth videos on understanding how do you create buttons and inputs and all of these things. You don't need me to teach you that as to how do you use variants. We'll have a proper video understanding how do you use variant properties. But the point here is that if I were to go and show you this one, you'd realize that all of these are the same named component, which means that if I were to click on this file right here, okay, we will now be redirected to the Figma's design system. So this right here is a very, very practical implementation. So the buttons that I just showed you, they were a very small subset of the actual variant. So let's see their properties. They have variant where it can be primary, uh, secondary and with icon. Okay. Then they have a state inside state. They have default disabled and focused. So focus is when you use the tab key, then they have destructive, which means is this a delete function or a normal one? So they have either true or false. So the benefit is that once I take these out, I can access all of these buttons through this one single button. Now, I personally feel you don't need me to take you through all of this. So I would strongly recommend you folks to download this file, not download, but basically duplicate this file from the Figma community and go through all of these components, click on the blue boundary and see what all variants and properties they have created. It will really, really give you a lot of insight. Now, another fun part is that let's say you have a big bunch of components. If you were to rename these components in a specific way, let's just say I take out this button. Okay. 
and let's take out all of them actually let's take out this one and this one okay and let me detach these let me detach this one as well and now i will rename them as button and just slash and here i can do button primary here i can do button secondary if i select both of them go here and click create component set instantly figma will know that i will create these as a variant my property one has only two values which is primary and secondary so after the slash whatever word i wrote became the value for that first property so let me give you a quick example if this is your component name and if i do component name slash whatever i write after that it will say property one value so you can't pass on the property's name for example you remember where here i was saying that this property name itself is called type left icon state this i can't pass through the name but this is also not necessary if figma names them as property 1 property 2 property 3 that would also work but you can easily pass these through the component name itself so you can add as many properties as you want for example if i were to write these names i would probably have button slash primary now i'm talking about property number 1 slash true which is the left icon so i'm not saying left icon true i'm just saying true because that was the value i needed slash true because that is for disabled so what happens is that if you write pri button primary large default false when it creates a variant it will just add all of these properties and give these values in that specific order so the slash is very very important in figma if you name slashes properly inside your components it helps you in variants if you use this properly while you're downloading files every slash will create a folder when you download these assets so it properties are just going to be numbered in the order it's just going to call property 1 and 2 now i would totally recommend you folks to learn how figma documented all of their systems of course you can check out base i shared so many resources on design systems you know so you'll realize that even though they have all of these properties on the right side they still have these labels on the top so you know when a designer is going through all of these variations it becomes slightly easy to understand what is happening where right so if i were to check out their you know icons and all of these places they have some labels so it becomes very easy uh, to you know understand what these files are for so documentation is also very very important it is way better to have these things written on the outset so that when somebody is using they don't have to sort of look at the right side menu and uh, by the way the dashed purple boundary can also be changed so if i were to go here and if you feel that no this is not in our brand guidelines you, you can just change this just like any other vector so you can change the stroke size as well if you feel that it is very very thin so yes uh, i would strongly recommend you folks to check out these components you know it's very very meta to actually see all of these components coming to life uh, mostly when it comes to variants you need to first understand constraints then you need to understand how components are declared and then eventually need to understand how exactly are variants created right so i hope this made some sense a lot of people say that ansh uh, how do we create this in our real projects i would recommend you folks to have some patience and just see what other people are doing right now and make notes so i'm just going to share you a couple of resources that will really really help you get inspiration for ui and design systems and a lot more and then i will tell you how do you now practically use all of the information that i just shared to you so on number 1 we have inspiration for ui and web design so i'm not going to show all of these websites one by one i feel like they are pretty straightforward uh, just take a screenshot and you know just go through all of them then here are some resources to learn figma so you have help.figma.com you have awesomefigtips.com that are shortcuts shortcuts.design is not just for figma but for all the creative tools out in the market and then figma components is a really really cool resource specifically now that you have understood so many of these things once you go to this website you can literally select any of these and let's just say you really like this calendar picker right you can copy this to clipboard and once you do that you can literally come back to your figma do command v and it will paste the exact component now you can obviously imagine how crazy powerful this is right because now you don't have to duplicate a file and go through all of those things you can literally sort of play around that easily so it's a very very powerful website uh, if you like this resource make sure you click on subscribe hit the bell icon and like this video because i spent so much time uh, you know curating these resources just for you so i want your feedback in the comment section 
Then we have resources for learning about design systems. I told you design systems repo.com, design systems for figma.com, where they redirect you to the exact Figma library. And now that you've understood the basics of component declaration, there are resources dedicated for learning how to make components and UI designs. So if I were to go to component gallery, this is a supremely useful website. What it does is, of course, you can go through design systems, but you can also click on components and see individually how each of these components are created in other design systems. For example, if you go to checkbox, you'll see how a single checkbox component has been declared in all of these different design systems. And this is so useful. So if I go uh, to checkbox under the Dell design system, it will redirect me to the exact documentation of how Dell has declared it. So I can go to eBay. I can also check out, let's say Goldman Sachs. So, you know, these are legit companies, like these are real, real companies, and you will learn so much about how to declare these components. So when you watch all of these videos and documentations, right, you'll slowly, slowly understand that they declare the logic behind it. But this is where you need to use your variance. Right. So when you're creating this component right here, this checkbox, this checkbox will have multiple variants. One will be default, one will be checked, one will be disabled, one will be focused. So all of those things, you need to create all of those inside Figma. So all of these documentations, they don't teach you how to use this or how to declare this on Figma because the tools keep on changing, but their thought process, their logic, all of these things will never change. Right. So if Goldman Sachs has created all of these variants, this is the logic behind it. But now how do you implement this on Figma that will keep on changing with time. So you can obviously see that this thing right here, this is going to be a variant set, right? And they'll have multiple properties. So I would totally recommend you folks to check this out. It's a very, very useful resource and you will really, really find this uh, helpful. There's one more resource called checklist.design that basically helps you uh, follow a prescription. For example, if you're creating a text field, it'll tell you everything that you need to declare and consider all of the states, every single thing properly defined in detail. So this will help you a lot. Microcopy.me is just for copywriting. You will really need it. Uh, if you're here for the first time, folks, we have been creating a lot of in-depth content on UX design, chat GPT, mid journey, upskilling, making more money in general documentation. All of those videos are neatly curated on our YouTube channel. This is a Figma course. This is not a UI design course. This is not a UX design course. If you want to learn UX in detail, you should totally check out learnuiux.in. If you're trying to plan your career, whether you're in school or college anywhere, we have created a proper in-depth roadmap video. It's called the 2023 roadmap video. All links would be in description. If you're already a UX designer and not being able to make money, we've created a very, very high value video called tips on getting a high paying job as a designer. Of course, the 15 episode course on the UX design, it's freely available on the YouTube channel. Every single resource, including the Figma community file for all of this is freely available. Everything is in the description. And folks, I'm telling you, it takes at least six to eight months to just learn the basics of Figma and UX. I will not give you any false promises. If you want to make that one lakh rupee per month wala package, you need to first spend six to eight months completing my syllabus Figma and from learnuiux.in. After that, you can only apply for an internship. Once you show your potential in three months during your internship, only then you can sort of upsell to get a full-time job. So, you know, we've covered all of this in the roadmap video. And if you're struggling with writing your case studies, then we have two very in-depth videos on writing UX case studies. Before we end this video, there's very, very important homework for you. Number one, Comment below if this video helped you. Give us detailed feedback on how this was and detailed feedback on what we should cover in the upcoming videos. Let us know if there's any specific topic that you're confused about. I will make sure that I include it if it is a part of the Figma syllabus. Now you need to recreate the search component. This is your concrete homework. This is tangible homework that you need to complete in the next five days. Otherwise, everything is wasted. You need to put this into action. Now to get inspiration, there's this website called pencilandpaper.io and they have an article that teaches you everything that you need to consider while you're designing search. So you need to recreate this with all the states, all the variants, every single thing properly defined. Document your learnings, put it on LinkedIn or on Instagram and tag me and I will personally make sure that I either acknowledge it or see it or if I get time, I will actually give you feedback on it as well. 
but i really really want you folks to do this now of course i will only give you feedback if you upload this in the next 5 days after the upload date if you do it within 5 days i will give you feedback i will acknowledge it otherwise i can't do this forever so i'm i'm pretty sure that is obvious but i'm still making this explicit please make sure that you watch our color styles video type declaration video and button declaration video in the 15 episode course because you need that to actually build an app because that is the ux part of things please make sure you make detailed notes on notion if you don't know how notion works we have created an in-depth video on how do you use notion for documentation and your goal should be that in the next one week you should build your own button and input field system so you first figure out how to make search you use component gallery for inspiration you use checklist dot design you read this article i've given you all the resources that you needed i've given you a detailed walk through of how figma works so now you have no excuse right but i'm looking forward uh, to see who comes up with the best search component Now we've already done with four lectures. If there's any lecture that you still haven't seen, please make sure you watch them. I personally believe that you'll have to watch every video at least twice and document your learnings. Otherwise, you'll just forget it. In next lecture, we'll cover variables, which is a very very complex topic to be honest because there's a lot to learn here. It's going to be a very very long video, and you will not be able to understand variables if you haven't finished styles and libraries and if you don't understand. the basics of design tokens so please make sure you do that and then of course we have all the remaining lectures uh, left as well now let me switch my camera and let me give you some very very important advice before you start you know on to this journey now that now that we have halfway through through the course so folks now that you have finished at least 40 to 50% of this course it's very very important that you take care of few things apart from just designing just so that you get the best results see it's not just about being really really good at what you do first of all you need to be visible to the right kind of people second you need to have the ability to sell your skills and third you need to know how to manage your time and energy if you're really good at what you're doing and you're not visible to the right kind of people you'll find clients that don't pay you well and you will end up being frustrated second if you don't know how to sell your services people will exploit you so you might be visible to the right kind of people but just because you're not very good at negotiating you're not very good at pricing yourself you're not very good at setting contracts you will have big big issues at the very end you need to understand this that this entire world of design it runs on perception it runs on delivery it runs on efficiency when you talk to someone they can sense how much energy you have they can sense if you're freaked out if you're panicked so you need to be calm but a person who's terrible at energy management and time management can never be calm a person who's freaking out a person who has no control over his or her emotions can be triggered very easily and these clients they know that so they will put pressure on you and they will sort of manipulate you throw you here here and there and you know all of those things together so even though we have been creating content on design i personally meet so many designers who are not stuck in their life because they don't know figma or they don't know ui they know all of that but it's because very few people actually talk about things like time management energy management you know upskilling in general the ability to sell yourself the ability to improve your charisma so there's a certain set of videos that we have put on our youtube channel i would really urge you to watch those number 1 is a video that is called how to glow up it's called how to fix your life or how to glow up i'll put the link in description number 2 the first two episodes of our series of our 15 episode course talks about this only your energy management your time management and there's one resource that is not on youtube but it is on spotify it was my own podcast that i had created back in college days it's called take it easy and i don't run it anymore but everything that i have mentioned in that show 3 years ago can be really really helpful if you listen to it in your college days or in your early parts of your career i don't talk about those things anymore because i realize that maybe i should first teach the hardcore skills but i also know that if you have done enough of your hardcore skills and you still don't feel that your life is changing maybe you need to learn something else because the universe will keep throwing problems at you again and again until unless you learn what is wrong so you'll keep solving the uh, same challenges again and again simply because you're not learning so i know that i've already given you like so much of homework and so many resources to explore but your roadmap should be number 1 complete the homework that i gave for this video number 2 at least watch one one video from these 
you know personality improvement videos it could be how to glow up it could be take it easy it could be the first two videos of the 15 episode course just some of them and try to implement them right because uh, i have personally benefited a lot not because i was really good at design i am not the best ux designer in the world but i can say this for a fact that i'm one of the most visible ux designers in india so i'm not the best but i'm the most visible and that itself has helped me a lot so i might not be a really really good designer but i'm a really good communicator and sometimes that itself is good enough to at least have the opportunity come to you and later on you can learn and sort of deliver but being a good communicator being good at your charisma being good at up upselling and you know just understanding how do you sell your services how do you price yourself how to make more money as a creative those things really really matter so yes i just wanted to like share this before i end this video uh, let me know in the comment section if you have connected with us on instagram as well we have a broadcast channel on instagram where i regularly share a lot of my inside life behind the scenes if i go to a very cool event if i go to a really cool party i share snippets of that as well so that is like a close circle that we've been creating on instagram and i would love to see your feedback in the comment section you know people who write comments more than 50 60 characters are my favorite because i feel that you know they have spent time like i have also spent time making this video and they as a viewer have also spent time so totally totally appreciate all of the comments that i get and i remember your names as well so i know there are some people who regularly show support and i can't wait to meet you in real life as well uh, and yes exciting thing are coming up uh, we will be launching a lot of new new videos as well around the topics of ai upskilling ar vr design and a lot more uh, looking forward to all of it and i hope that you're taking care of your mind and body this is your dost ansh mehra signing out if you like this video make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button i regularly upload videos on ux design marketing and storytelling